All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Bottom Line Live. We have people coming on live on Zoom. We have people coming on live on Facebook. This is also going to get posted more places. So I'm just going to wait a second for a few more people to log in who are planning on being here. Um, we're going to keep you guys muted and your videos off. But if you have a question, you can type in your question and I'll answer it. And I might have you come on and ask it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll first. Let me just make sure that I'm on Facebook and everything is going good. Um, we're going to keep your videos off for this one because we have it set up where, um, here we go. Okay, look at me. I'm on Facebook. I haven't done one of these in a while, guys. I'm going to start doing them again. I don't know if I'm going to do them every week because I was doing them every week. I might do them every other week or every month. If anyone has a, a vote on that, feel free to vote. Um. But I definitely wanted to do one before the end of the year because we have people asking me all the time. We actually, I have just sold um, three payroll setups in the last three days for the end of the year because people are getting to the point where they are realizing it's the end of the year and there's things to do for their for their companies, right? So, so that's one of the things that I'm gonna go into. Okay, so we have people here. We have people coming on my live. All right, I'm going to start talking. And more people are going to show up as we go, as they always do. But basically, I really wanted to come on here, like I said, for the end of the year. Let me look at my notes real quick of everything that I wanted to say. So there's so many things that you have to do as a business owner for the end of the year that people don't think about until sometimes the very end of the year or they start thinking about it in January and sometimes it's too late. So I want to go over those things and I'm just going to start. Oh, here we have more people coming. I'll let them in as they come. Uh, but I just wanted to start going over what those things are that you have to have for the end of the year as a business owner. So the main thing, I know I talk about this all the time, and um, although I haven't done one of these in a while, so maybe I shouldn't say I talk about this all the time, but the first thing that you need for the end of the year, if you don't have this already, is you need bookkeeping. If you don't have your bookkeeping, then you can't do all of the rest of these things that I'm going to tell you that you need. Now, what does that mean, have your bookkeeping? You need to know we're we're mid-December right now. We're almost the end of the year. It's about to be Christmas. And, you know, the few days before Christmas, people are going to stop thinking about taxes and bookkeeping for a few days. And then right before New Year's, people are going to start thinking about it again. So now's a really good time to think about it. So what do I mean by this? For those of you that have books, like you have QuickBooks online, or you even if you keep a spreadsheet, whatever you do, and keep it up every week, this does not apply to you. For the rest of you that kind of sit down at the end of the year, maybe even you know right before taxes are due in April or March, and have a, a box of receipts, bank statements, three days hiding in the closet with a pot of strong coffee or maybe something stronger to drink, this is for you. So the rest of the world who doesn't have it organized, because I know so some of you do, probably, hopefully everyone listening to this does, but for the rest of you that don't, now is the time. You've got to get your bookkeeping in order. You need to know what is your profit. You need to know what your profit is so that if you haven't done a payroll yet and you own an S corporation or you're an LLC taxes and S corporation, you will know what to pay yourself if you haven't done a payroll yet. If you have a small S corporation, a lot of times the CPA will pay you at the end of the year. But if he doesn't know what your profit is, he won't be able to pay you or he won't know how much to pay you. And it'll be a lot of problems on your taxes later. So you need to know that you need to know what your profit is so that, you know, 
if you should spend any more money. I've had people calling me, oh my gosh, um, should I be buying things? And then what kind of things should you buy? Should you buy equipment? Okay, well, let's talk about that. If you buy equipment and it's expensive, more than like $5,000, let's say, it's considered an asset. Almost all assets will be depreciated over time. Now, this is something you should ask your CPA because not all answers are going to be the same for everyone. It's going to apply differently to each person. But a piece of equipment could be depreciated over time. So it might not be the best thing to buy right now if you're trying to lower your profit for the end of the year for taxes. It could be maybe some computers. Computers are usually pretty cheap these days, $1,000, $1,500 for some laptops. That might help. There's um, you know, certain vehicles that are have a certain weight, you know, those can help if you have a lot of profit, things like that. But you won't know what to do if you don't know what your profit is. So that's why you need to know that. Now, all these different things. So you want tax planning, right? This is something that I talk about a lot. You want to pay the least amount as possible in taxes legally. You need tax planning. You need to know how much money you should be putting aside for um, for retirement contributions. You know, let's say, should you start another company? Should you hire your children? These are all things that you're going to find out when you're doing tax planning and you can't do any tax planning if you don't have books. So it all kind of comes down to this. So you need your bookkeeping. You need it so that you know so you can do tax planning right now. I mean, you should have scheduled your tax planning appointment a few weeks ago, if not months ago. It might be kind of late right now, but you might still be able to do it now or in January for the end of 2023. There are some things that you can still do at the end of the year and to get yourself really well set up for 2024. You also need your bookkeeping for taxes because who wants to sit down and do that thing where you hide in the closet for three days, right? So you need it for that. So you got to have it ready for taxes. Um, you also need your bookkeeping in case you have any, what, do we have any questions here? We have people agreeing with me. Nick Harvey P Pearson says 100%. And okay, this is, um, we're going to talk about taxes. So if there is anything else that you run into, that you need to know, you know, you're like, you have to have a person you can ask questions to as a business owner, you every year you run into things and you don't even know as a business owner, how do I track this? Is this an asset? Is this expense? You're not going to know. Okay, good. So those are the basic basics that I'm always going to talk about. What else do you need to know for end of the year? Okay, here's something that since I haven't done a bottom line live in a while, I haven't talked about this in a while, we're going to talk about this again. 1099s. Oh my gosh, I could do a whole a whole half an hour just on 1099s and I have many times. We're going to do this again. And if anybody in the live has any questions, feel free to write them, whether you're on Facebook, whether you're on Zoom, you can ask the questions and I will answer them for you. I like answering questions. I like helping people. Okay, so 1099s. As a business owner, every year you file 1099s. Usually you assume, okay, they're a contractor for me. We know they're a contractor. They filled out a W-9, so I'm going to file 1099s for them. Now, I want to remind everyone, in case you haven't seen one of my you know, webinars on 1099s, anybody who you pay to do a service for you as a business will need a 1099 unless they're a corporation. There are more complicated rules to this depending on how they were paid, especially this year with payment processors running, you know, sending 1099s, um, even for small amounts of money where before they used to only send them out for 20,000 plus. But keep this in mind, anybody that you paid $600 or more in a calendar year for services, if you are a business owner and you hired someone from your business to do gardening for your business, to fix your windows, to paint your walls, those are services. For marketing, um, if you hired someone to, um, you know, even if you don't call it, you hired them, but you paid for someone to do a service for you. If you have an assistant and you just think that they're your assistant, you have to, and they're not on payroll, which they probably should be, 
but if they're not, they would get a 1099, right? Also, this is a good time to look at who should be on payroll and who should be getting a 1099. So the people who should be on payroll are the people who work for your company. And they, there's a few different things, right, where the IRS will tell you, you know, in their rules, whether someone should be on payroll or not. If they work for you full time, if you direct their schedule and their work and you provide their tools and they don't work for other people and they don't have, you know, a business of their own, they are 99% of the time going to be an employee. As an employee, you have to have them on payroll. And when we say payroll, we mean W-2 payroll, not just you pay them money every week and you call it payroll, right? I know that gets confusing sometimes. So if you pay someone money and it's not with payroll taxes coming out, that's a contractor payment where you're gonna give them a 1099. If you pay someone money as an employee and taxes come out when you pay them, that's gonna be a W-2 payment or a W-2 employee that is gonna get a W-2 at the end of the year. So you have to be able to know the difference and you have to know that you have to file both of those forms. So they're both due by the end of January. If you run payroll, then most likely you have a payroll company and they will send out those W-2s for you by the end of January. Um, if you pay contractors, which is again, is not just someone that you would consider a contractor, like probably you know that if you hire a marketing company to do marketing for you, it's a contractor and you give them a 1099 at the end of the year, unless they're a corporation, right? There are definitely more things to it, which I'm not doing a whole thing on 1099s right now. So, but you, so you probably know that, right? Yeah, that makes sense. They're a contractor. But think of your person that comes in, your cleaner that comes in and cleans your office, your, you know, lawn maintenance person, your IT person, all of these different services and business owners hire a lot of people to help them on services. These are all going to need a 1099. So that's one thing that you want to make sure that you have all of the W-9s together. And the W-9 is basically the form where they give you their information so you can file a 1099. It has their business name, their address, what type of um, tax entity they have, because again, if they're a corporation, you're not gonna file a 1099, and their tax ID number. So you need all of that in order to file the 1099. The best way to get those is to get a W-9 before you pay someone. But if you don't have that, then now's a really good time to look through and make sure that you have W-9s for anybody that you paid for 2023. Okay, I'm gonna check my notes. What else am I supposed to be talking about? Actually, let me look at my questions on Facebook. What do we have? Um, Nick is saying lots of gold nuggets. You're very welcome. Brandon, Brandon quit flirting. That's all I can say on this video right now. But he does also say solvency now bailed me out in 2021. She's the best. Thank you. We did. He had a big mess and we retrained his whole um, finance team on how to do it correctly. And we fixed all the things that he had. So that was, that was very good that we were able to help him. Let me see, do we have any other questions here? Brandon's laughing at me. And his 1099s were a mess and we did kill it. Yes, thank you. We did, it's true. But I have lots, I, I have tons of testimonials on my website, but I can even, I have so many more that I forget to even ask them when they say, oh my gosh, thank you for saving us that I didn't, didn't even post yet. Okay, so again, if anybody has any questions for stuff needed for the end of the year, it's only showing me the last four, which is pretty much Brandon, just Brandon, calm down. Um, but we're going to we're going to continue. Let me just check my notes of what else I wanted to go over. So you guys, okay, year end bookkeeping best practices. So we've been talking about that. You guys have heard me talk about this. So it's basically, honestly, always the basics. I know it sounds maybe redundant because I'm a bookkeeper and I'm saying you need to have your bookkeeping. But the reason is, is because that's the very basic basic that you need in order to do all of the other cool things that you want to do. If you want to get an investor, if you want to get a loan, if you want to get, you know, um, if you want to sell your company, you know, all of these things, the first thing they're going to ask you is to see your books. And you want it this year, you know, you want to file your taxes. You want to do it early this year. You don't want to wait until the last second that you like you normally do, right? And 
you want to be able to do tax planning. So the way to do all that is to have the books done now. And bookkeeping isn't complicated. It can be time consuming and there are certain pieces of it that are complicated. Um, someone told me recently, oh, bookkeeping is just data entry. It is not data entry. It is no longer data entry because we use so many automations. QuickBooks Online, which is what we use and a majority of bookkeepers use, pulls the data from your bank account and we're not doing any data entry. We're categorizing it. We're using tons of automations. We're reconciling it. We're making sure that it has not no glitches, that the data has, you know, is all complete because here's why. We don't want your bookkeeping to be wrong or you're paying taxes on money that doesn't exist or you're missing out on possible tax deductions. I'm going to do a whole nother webinar. I've done them before. I'm going to do another one on possible tax deductions that a business owner might be missing. But I really wanted to, for the end of the year, just talk about what do we need for end of the year? Okay. Understanding tax deductions. Yes. I'm doing this. I'm talking fast. I always talk fast, but I'm basically going to go over this just very briefly. So a tax deduction or a tax write-off is anything that your business spends money on that lowers your taxable income. Not everything that your business spends money on lowers your taxable income. Let's say you as a business owner decide to pay yourself money, right? And you transfer yourself money. If that doesn't go through payroll, it does not lower your taxable income. It's considered that you're just taking profit. So you're still paying taxes on that. Let's say for instance, meals, business meals this year, business meals are 50% deductible again. So that means that it doesn't, let's say you spend $1,000 throughout the year on business meals, it doesn't lower your income by $1,000, it lowers your, or your taxable income, it lowers your taxable income by $500, right? So you have to be able to have all the information in there. So the CPA or tax preparer, whoever's doing your taxes has it all and can enter it incorrectly. Okay, anybody have any questions on tax deductions? Um, can you serve business in other countries like Canada and Mexico or focusing in the USA? So personally, my company only does bookkeeping for US based businesses. I don't know all the tax laws, not that I know all the tax laws in the US, but I know a lot of them, all the basic ones. So I don't know the tax laws. I don't know bookkeeping rules for Canada or Mexico. So we don't do those. We only do the US. But I'm always looking for someone really good who can do international because I have clients come to me that either they're a foreign national that owns a business in the U.S. or they're, they just moved here or they have one of the owners is outside the U.S. And none of the CPAs and tax preparers that I work with um, specialize in that. So if you know of anybody that does that, I've been looking. I don't have one in my Rolodex, quote unquote. Not that I really have a Rolodex anymore, but, you know. We used to have Rolodexes, right? Okay, good. So we're going to do another webinar on common tax deductions you might be missing, but just keep track of everything that you spend money on as a business, right? Because some of it could be tax deductible that you're not even thinking about. Home office expenses, right? Let's say you, as a business owner, you work from home like a lot of us do these days. So the square footage of your home office compared to your entire house or apartment is going to be a tax deductible amount. With that, any costs for utilities, security, maintenance that are for your whole apartment or house, the percentage, the square footage amount that is your home office deduction would also count. Um, let's say you have business mileage, that's going to be tax deductible. There's a lot of different things. And the main thing is, is that you have to track them because you're not going to remember. Here's one thing that is a bookkeeping best practice. Don't spend money in cash. Not because I don't love cash. I love cash. Look, I keep cash. I love cash. But for business purposes, for tax deductions, when you spend money in cash, you usually forget what you spent it on. When you take money out of the ATM, you forget what you spent it on. You might be losing tax deductions. That's why I say don't spend money in cash. Okay. Other bookkeeping best practices. This is the time of year where a lot of people are paying Christmas bonuses out, or we hope. I know it's been a tough economy, so if you're not, I understand. But Christmas bonuses, if you are paying bonuses, make sure you run them through your payroll if you have employees and you're giving a Christmas bonus to your employees. You cannot just write them a check or give them a gift card 
it has to go through their taxes. It has to go through your payroll software. It has to go through, even if, if you did already write them a check, you know, or I mean, I'm saying a thousand dollars, I'm hoping everyone's super affluent, a hundred dollars, $25, whatever it is. If you did already give them the gift card or write the check, make sure you tell your bookkeeper or you tell your CPA so they can adjust the payroll because your the W-2s are going to be wrong and you have to make sure that gets corrected. So, but best practices, if you're going to be writing any checks for bonuses, run them through payroll, tell your bookkeeper, tell your CPA or whoever runs your payroll. That's very, very important. You want it to be correct. You don't want to get audited for stupid things like just because you didn't know, right? The other thing is, okay, receipts. You want to keep all your receipts. You don't have to enter them all into QuickBooks. You don't have to have them all, you know, like online, but you at least need to keep an envelope or a folder with all of your receipts for the year. Like if you have gas receipts that you're calling business expenses, things like that, keep them all for the year. Because if you were to ever get audited, you need all of that. You can enter it into QuickBooks. You can attach it. I know a lot of invoices and receipts are emailed these days. So keep them, keep them in folders on your email, but make sure you keep all the paper receipts. You don't have to do anything with them, but keep them, label them for the year, keep them. Okay. I'm checking for more questions. Um, Nick says what we spend cash on is often lost down the drain instead of being deducted. Exactly. So again, not that I don't love cash, spend cash on stuff. Personally, you can spend cash on stuff that's not tax deductible, but for your business, just don't use cash. It's, it's really hard to track. You're going to forget what you spent money on. Honestly, these days, even when I tip valets and stuff, I just pay them through Venmo or Cash App. And most people accept that these days. And I never even carry cash on me because whenever I have cash, I stick it in my piggy bank for my adventure fund. So there you go. Okay, good. Let me, checking my notes again. Anybody else have any questions? I'm rapid fire going through stuff you need for the end of the year. Tips for organizing financial records. Okay, so we talked about that a little bit. Basically, keep everything, right? Keep all your receipts. And then here's one thing. You know, if you're at the end of the year, and you have not yet done your bookkeeping, then this tip isn't really gonna help you. But for next year, if you do your bookkeeping, let's say it's like confusing and complicated, right? And you're a small company and you're not ready to hire someone to do it for you. Hire someone, hire me, hire someone, I don't mind who, as long as they know what they're talking about, to teach you the basics of you know how to use QuickBooks. You don't have to know everything about bookkeeping. You don't have to know everything about QuickBooks, but you do need to know the basics and how it applies to your company. And if it's hard for you to do, just do it every day because it's only going to take you five minutes and you're going to remember what you spent that money on yesterday or on Friday if it's Monday, right? But if you wait six months because you don't want to do it and it's stressful, that's when you might as well hire someone because it's going to be so hard for you to do it. It takes a lot of confront and it takes more time. So if you're at that point, then I recommend hiring someone to get you caught up. If you're not at that point, you know, let's say you you hire someone to get you caught up for 2023. If you're a small company, it's, it could be a small project. You know, maybe it could only take 10 hours and it's a good investment. It's also a tax deduction to pay your bookkeeper. Just saying. But let's say you are want to turn over a new leaf. You want to make a, a New Year's resolution for 2024 and you want to keep doing it yourself because you want to save that money. I mean, you're always investing something, guys, right? You're either investing time or money. So but let's say you want to still invest the time and not the money. You have to do it a little bit every day. And that way you won't get to where it's this big, unconfrontable disaster. If that didn't happen or that doesn't happen and you need help, reach out. You know, we can help you. If you're an industry that we don't serve, like we don't do restaurant bookkeeping, for instance, I have other contacts. I can, you know, find someone to help you. I've said this before, my personal purpose is to help business owners succeed. My mission statement for my company is complete and perfect financial records for the business owner's peace of mind. So even if I can't personally help you, like, or my company can't help you, I will personally help you. I'll try to find you a referral, someone that can help you, something that can help you, because I like to help business owners. I want them to succeed. Okay, checking on any other questions. Doesn't look like it yet. Good. I know I'm talking real fast because I want to just do this in like a half an hour. Okay. Important deadlines. I kind of went over this. So 
obviously end of the year is coming up in a couple of weeks. So January 31st, you've got all your W-2s and all your payroll reports are due. If you need to do a manual payroll because you only run your payroll once a year, it's due by January 31st. All your 1099s are due by January 31st. If you are elected to be taxed as an S-Corp, your taxes are due March 15th. If that falls on a Monday or, or a Sunday or something that's different, I haven't checked that out yet, but generally March 15th, you can file an extension, which I know a lot of uh, S-Corps do. The extension goes until September 15th, but let's try to get done early this year, right? If you are you know, a sole proprietorship, you're not elected to be taxed as an S-Corp, your taxes are due April 15th. Of course, if that falls on a weekend or if there's a natural disaster or a hurricane in your area, you might have more time but basically April 15th and then October 15th is the extension. Okay, so that is the gist of what I wanted to talk about. I haven't talked to you guys in a while. I've been you know, running around traveling the world and going to do conferences and learning new things. I was just at QuickBooks Connect a few weeks ago and learned a lot of new things happening for QuickBooks. Um, the bookkeeping and accounting area or profession are getting a lot more automations and, um, you know, we should all use chat GPT more to help accountants and bookkeepers. We want to make it so that it is more efficient for our clients. We want to be able to better service our clients because obviously people cannot compete with machines, but we can have better service. We can explain things better. We can do better handholding. And we are very, very good at that. So again, that's pretty much all I wanted to say to talk to you guys about what's needed for the end of the year. If there is anything else that anybody has questions, feel free to ask, now's a good time. If you're in Zoom, you can write it in the chat. If you are in Quick, uh, sorry, not QuickBooks, Facebook, you can write it in the Facebook chat. I will send this out to people. It will be on my YouTube page and I am just talking really fast, but, we're gonna do another one of these very soon. I'm gonna talk about tax deductions. I'm gonna go through a whole list. I'm gonna get, if anybody has questions in between, you can email me, maya at solvencynow.com. You can uh, message me on Facebook. You can message me on Instagram, wherever you want. You can send a smoke signal. You will find me and I do wanna help you. So we're gonna do this again very soon. Thank you all so much for coming. And again, please let me know if you have any questions. You can check out my website, solvencynow.com, or you can email me, maya at solvencynow.com. Okay, guys, thank you so much. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.